We're here at Roller Skate Club and we're gonna show you how to use a hitting pad for roller derby practice. So these are our hitting pads. They can be found at any sporting goods, boxing type facility. Where do you get them? <laughs> I forgot, uh, I immediately forgot where yeah, you got them. Yeah, we got them from um, Martial Arts Supply. And they're not too expensive. They're like, I think around 100 bucks each, which if you're a derby league on a budget, that could be something, but you don't necessarily need a thousand of them. You don't need one per person, right? So you can work these into drills by circuiting people through. So yeah, so this is what we use. They're nice and soft. They don't hurt, I promise. They've got handles on the back. And on the top and on the side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's important. What, what we'll go over, we'll teach you how to be a good pad holder as well, using the handles. So, uh, Bruzy, why don't you just demonstrate on me and show kind of how you would teach a brand new, well, not a brand new skater, but a skater who's new to contact, how to hit the hitting pad. Absolutely, let's do it. Get myself in there, ready. All right. So number one is you want to be using your entire body to make contact with the pad. Your hips and your shoulders are coming in to contact the pad, not just one or the other. So we want to move our bodies as a contained unit. I always say move like a soup can, not like a slinky. So we're connected. We're not loosey-goosey moving around. We're moving as one controlled unit coming across to hit that pad. Okay, so when we're driving into the pad, all the power is coming from the outside leg. So we're driving through that outside leg using that butt cheek to drive us towards the pad. You don't ever want to reach and pull yourself towards the pad. You always want to push the pad. Another tip is to imagine that you are trying to take the place of the pad. So you're driving through. This isn't your final destination. Your final destination is not the pad. Your final destination is through the pad into where she's standing. So when you drive, you keep going. Remember to keep your head up. Try not to look at the ground. Either look at your target or look ahead slightly. And when you come across, make sure that your knees are nice and soft. You've got a nice bend in your hips. You're not standing perfectly upright. And that way, when you hit the pad and make contact, you'll be nice and stable. Yeah, where should someone aim for on the pad? You're gonna wanna have your partner adjust to your body. So if you're a taller skater, you might have to lift the pad higher. If you're a, a shorter skater, you might have to put it lower. But the idea is to have your hips and shoulders hit the center of the pad. If you want an extra challenge, put that pad even lower and make yourself get super low to hit that pad. So let's talk about the pad holder. Um, that's an important job. So there's a few important things you need to know. So this, these pads that we have have handles across the back. So we slide our arm through them and then we hold on to the other handle for support. Um, what a lot of skaters tend to want to do naturally because they really don't want this person to hit them yet <laughs> is they try to hold the pad out so they're using their arm strength and their shoulder to kind of brace the pad. So watch what happens when Bruzy hits me. It <laughs> doesn't work very well, right? So our role as the pad holder is to be providing a really awesome, solid target for the person who's actively doing the hitting part. So it's an important job, so we have to be strong with our arm. And the best way to do that is to just cement that arm right into your body. So now your body is taking the impact. And you've got a lot more to work with and you're kind of holding here for extra support so that the pad doesn't swivel. And then the second thing is your opponent's job, uh, like we just showed a minute ago, is to come and like replace you. So give her a chance. <laughs> give her a really strong target so she can put some force into it as you get used to it, of course. So I'm gonna place my feet nice and wide and I'm gonna get nice and low so that when Bruzy comes and hits me, I don't like take off into outer space, <gasps> right? And if my partner is quite strong and they're strong enough to give me a bunch of force, then I'm gonna counter block a little bit. So I'm gonna like jump back into her a little bit, right? One more. So you can see that I'm actually doing a little hit of my own just so I'm giving her like a really good solid target so she can put all her force into it. Because if I don't do that, here's what it'll look like. Ready for some shenanigans? <laughs> so, <laughs> that's not what 
we're going for. So we want to be a super solid, awesome target for our buddy here. A really simple drill you can do for this is just a timed or counted exercise. So you can hit the pad five times on one side, switch, hit the pad five times on the other side. You can also do this with timed intervals, so 30 seconds of hitting on one side, then 30 seconds of hitting on the other side. It's a great cardio workout. Two, three, four, five. Watch her skates. She keeps them facing perpendicular to the direction of travel so that she has the most resistance. So when I hit the pad, she can stop. If she points her skates the other way, when I hit the pad, she will roll. Oh, we can keep okay. pushing as well. So this is a great way to um, teach a person to use their edges to drive into someone sideways. So. Um, we would have someone go, you know, to halfway across the track and then turn around and face the other direction and then keep going so that they're trying both sides and then you switch partners and come back. So here's what that looks like. So for this one, um, what's important is for the pusher uh, to keep her skates perpendicular to the direction of travel. If she tries to turn her skates the way she's going, she won't have any leverage. She won't be able to push as much. Um, so skates perpendicular for this person, hips facing forward. And then for the holder, for this one, you're probably gonna wanna put down a toe stop um, so that you have more leverage and you're able to provide some force. And your goal here isn't to stop the person. <laughs> you wanna let them move you and you wanna give them resistance. So as the holder, you can ask How's this? Do you want harder or softer? You know, so it's your job to be facilitating for the other person. Yeah. And you can also step or cross over. And then there's also one for the jammers where you can work on pushing an opponent with your chest. So you get nice and low, drive in, and use your edges or your toe stops. To push. So for that jammer push drill, it's pretty hard work, definitely for the jammer type person, but also for the holder. Um, so this is a great one to work in as intervals into your practice. So you might push all the way down the straightaway or, you know, 30, 40 feet in your space, break, go back the other direction, break and do a few reps of that and then change partners um, or work it into some kind of circuit drill that you're doing at practice. Uh, another great drill you can use the hitting pad for is kind of a timing and target practice drill. So have your skaters practice skating up and into the pad and laying a hit while on the move. So Bruce is gonna demonstrate. Woo! So you can see with that one that the skater's gotta come and make kind of like a J shape with her skates. So she's gotta cut into the hit. So that's another great thing that you can use to teach simultaneously is cutting into a hit. And if you're cutting in, you're using your whole body as opposed to uh, doing the like A-frame hit that we talked about earlier, right? So that's a great one to practice. I'll do one more demo. So your skater's gonna be coming in with more force obviously because she's on the move. So um, as the pad holder, Obviously, as I demonstrated poorly, um, you need to get yourself nice and low and get ready for that hit, otherwise you're gonna get launched. So I was like up way too high, so I got launched this way. So I need to be down here and ready for it as the holder. If you have lines on the ground, that's great. You can use those to signify where your skaters can, can go. But if not, you can always use cones to really tighten up the angle of attack. So instead of coming across at a smooth angle, you come across at a sharper angle. You don't want to angle gradually towards the target because you're not going to have as much oomph. Let me do one more. All right, so before you go anywhere, we have an extra special surprise for you because we figured out a very fancy, very high tech way of allowing you to use hitting pads so that your team can practice even if you have COVID restrictions and need to have no contact, 
social distancing. We've been doing this all year here at Roller Skate Club and it has been really fun. One of the best times of my week is getting here to come and like kick the crap out of a hitting pad during COVID and like take out my frustration. So we're gonna show you how we do it. All right, here it is, this thing of beauty. I told you it was really fancy and complicated, right? So we're just using a hook on the wall, regular old coat hook, well fastened, and um, a carabiner and rope system. So um, we like to set this up in such a way that you can adjust it um, depending on your height a little bit. So we have a few different ways that we can kind of like change the height according to the skater. So it's providing the right height and the right challenge. And it's pretty simple, looks like that. So we're gonna do a lot of the same types of drills that we would do with the hitting pad with partners, just obviously stationary. So you get it set up to your skater's height. So you can see it's kind of below my armpit height at the top here. Plant your feet, get ready. Remember, the wall's gonna offer a lot of resistance. <laughs> get your arms out of the way, down, up into the pad, down, up into the pad. Just like Bruzy said before, I'm driving, I'm pushing away from my far leg. I'm not reaching with the in leg and I'm not having ballet leg out the side for counterbalance, right? So I'm pushing off of here into that pad. And so one of the drills that I love to do with this one is just like we did with partners, five hits, turn around, five hits, or even two hits, turn around, two hits. So two hits looks like this, one, two, turn, one, two, turn, one, two, turn. So you're just giving your skaters a little bit of a tiny pause, but also some footwork to work on. We can also do a skate up into it drill, just like we did before. Again, you gotta be careful to remember that the wall is gonna offer a very firm resistance here. So you can skate up at an angle turn into the pad and hit with the side of your body. One more time. Skate up, turn in, hit with the side of your body. So have your skaters take it slow with this till they get used to the timing. You've got a very stationary target and one that isn't gonna budge when you hit it. So it's good to practice this one and get your footwork and your timing really dialed in before you add a lot of pressure. One last little COVID friendly tip for you here. We just use um, a disinfectant wipe to wipe these down between uses. So thanks bud. Let's take my wipe, give her a nice clean and it's good to go for the next buddy. COVID friendly derby practice. All right, that's it from us here at Roller Skate Club, your derby coaches for the day. Uh, if you are a derby skater or a wannabe derby skater or a derby league, and you wanna get tons of workouts, skills, and drills just like this, then definitely check out our online memberships. There's hundreds of videos with really practical, usable tips and some amazing roller workouts, which is our derby-inspired workout on wheels. So we hope to see you in there. Check it out on our website. Give me a hit. One, two, oh. <laughs> redo. How's my butt look? No, amazing. <laughs>